G'day everyone. Welcome back to Lubrication Explained. Today we're going to be talking about used oil analysis and ultimately why do we do it? What's the purpose of doing used oil analysis and why is it important? So as I've covered in a previous video, uh, something like 23% of all of the world's energy goes into overcoming what we call tribological contacts. It's effectively friction. The bit that we're really interested in here is the 3% that goes into remanufacturing worn parts. So this is what used oil analysis can help us avoid. What we're trying to do is mitigate those losses because they have huge impacts on companies' bottom lines as well as on the environment, greenhouse gas emissions, etc. And if you remember, that was a study that was done in 2017 in the journal Friction. So how should we think of oil analysis? Well, I think something that everyone can maybe appreciate is the idea of going to a doctor for a checkup. They might take a blood sample and that's used to assess your kind of overall health. So when they take the blood sample, they're not just measuring a single marker. They might be measuring, for example, cholesterol, both good and bad. They might be measuring blood sugar, a whole variety of different measurements. And these will help your doctor identify maybe some conditions or underlying conditions that we can treat even before the symptoms become very severe. Think of oil analysis exactly the same way. It's like a blood sample, but for your machinery. What it's going to help us to do is assess the oil of, uh, sorry, the health of your operation. In a similar way to the way that we think about blood testing, you have to think of used oil analysis as being conducted kind of in a wider context. So if you take one blood sample, that is moderately useful and the information is of some value, but really it comes into its own when you've been taking samples, let's say once every three months, over an extended period of time. Maybe you can trend the data over the last five years to see if maybe your cholesterol is improving. Uh, if it is getting worse, then we would suggest maybe an exercise regime or some medication. In the same way, we can use used oil analysis to inform maintenance decisions. So if we see wear starting to accelerate, as an example, we might uh, encourage some kind of intervention. Maybe we change our maintenance practices. So we really want to use used oil analysis to inform our maintenance practices, but it can't be used alone, right? This is not a panacea. It needs to be an essential part of a preventative maintenance program that incorporates a whole bunch of other me measures. So when we talk about uh, used oil analysis, it's helpful to understand this idea of the P to F curve. If you've not come across it before, here's a quick primer. So what we're trying to avoid is some kind of failure, and we'll call that F. And as we work backwards, what we're trying to do is, you know, relate every failure to the initiation of the problem. We're trying to kind of backtrack to where it all started. Probably one of the easier ones to understand might be a, a bearing failure, because most people will be familiar with that. Now, bearing failures um, come in all shapes and sizes. And the problems, they're also infinite in their variety and complexity. But if you think of most bearing failures, we probably could have diagnosed uh, the problem before it became a catastrophic failure. So let's think of some of the, the ways that we might have identified the problem. So early on in the piece, uh, Maybe if we had been do doing VA, that is uh, vibration analysis, we might have seen some changes in the vibration profile of the bearing. At some point, we might be able to recognize where debris in the oil. So those vibrations are going to induce some excessive wear and we'll get wear particles, notably iron, maybe the PQ index will increase. 
we'll see that in the oil samples. At some stage, we might see excessive heat. That could be picked up on infrared thermography. As the situation starts to progress, uh, maybe we start to see, uh, or, or sorry, rather hear an audible noise. So people who are familiar with the equipment will be able to walk up to it and recognize that something is the matter. And finally, when, we're, when failure is imminent, the actual equipment might even get hot to the touch or hotter than usual. And at that point, you know, we have failure. So you can see that here there are a wide range of tools that we have at our disposal to catch the problem P before it becomes a failure F. And oil analysis in particular here is helping us pick up where to bring in the oil before it becomes a really big problem. So P to F describes the time between the problem onset and the equipment failure. So used oil analysis forms one of the suite of tools that can help us identify that. And I'll talk about this a little bit further in a, in a future video, but when we talk about reliability engineering best practices, you kind of want to schedule the diagnostics at no more than half the P to F interval. And that's going to help us guide um, how often we should be taking oil samples. Now the difficulty is that this P to F interval, it's not constant and it's really difficult to quantify. So let's go back to our bearing example. We might have catastrophic bearing failures that are the result of, uh, let's say for example, an incorrectly specced grease. Now that uh, P to F interval might be very long because the degradation of that bearing might occur over a matter of 12 months. On the other hand, we have other failures. Let's say uh, if the bearing was installed with a very severe misalignment, that could occur in a matter of weeks. So this P to F interval can vary greatly. And that's going to make it very difficult when it goes to um, choosing a frequency for which we should sample. There are other benefits of doing used oil analysis as well. It's not just confined to where debris analysis. So we might, for example, want to maximize our oil drain periods. Again, this will be the future of another video where I talk you through how to run an oil drain trial and maximize the life of your oil. We can only really do that if we have a good understanding of the oil results. Determining suitability for continued use. So maybe we haven't done a full oil drain trial, um, but maybe we'd like to extend our oil life because we're coming up to a major shutdown and we would prefer that uh, the oil isn't changed until then. Well, taking a sample can validate whether uh, the oil can be used in service for another one, two, three months to kind of get you to that maintenance interval. It also helps us evaluate equipment condition. Again, this will be the future of uh, subject of future videos. But by looking at the, in particular, ICP metals, we can get a really good idea for how the equipment is performing. And as we start to do more trend analysis and we can compare it to other equipment that we might have on site, it'll give us a, a pretty good indicator of how the equipment is performing. And finally, it helps us with troubleshooting. This could be after the fact, so maybe we've had a failure that we didn't recognize in time. We go back and we looked at the uh, used oil analysis results to try and determine what the problem was and when it started. Alternatively, we might be having some trouble uh, with a bit of equipment and we are trying to identify the root cause of the problem. And again, used oil analysis can uh, often help point us in the right direction. So as you can see, uh, there are lots of reasons why we should do used oil analysis. Um, I would say that the, the sites that I go to, the quality of used oil analysis uh, and the way that it's conducted on site uh, does leave room for, for some improvement. And so as we go along with future videos, I'd like to explore ways that we can really uh, maximize the value of our used oil analysis programs. 
Thanks so much for listening to this really short video. I hope you got a little bit out of it. This has been Lubrication Explained.